What's going on everybody, this is Brian from SneakerFiles.com, recapping the news from yesterday, like always we post it on SneakerFiles.com, and then we take it to YouTube. Now in yesterday's video I asked you guys for 300 likes and you guys killed it, like I'm actually really surprised how many likes it got. I thought it would barely get 300 because sometime back I tried doing this and um, I don't know, I, th I felt like if asking for likes, people wouldn't like it. and that isn't the case so I want to thank everybody for that so the new milestone for today is 400 so let's see if we can get to 400 likes on this video and then we'll move up but as for information today we have first looks from Jordan brand I know a lot of you are just interested in that and just to run over it briefly we have a first look at the Air Jordan 13 altitude we also have a first look at the Air Jordan 1 retro high OG cell in University Red along with the Air Jordan 1 P51 camo pack. And that pack features two colorways. One has a shadow-like theme, the other has a somewhat band, AKA bread theme to it. Also, we have a mock-up of the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 blue tint. And we got some stuff from Reebok, some stuff from Nike, more stuff from Adidas. But without wasting too much of your time, let's jump into the news. The last way of Wade 5 to release is known as Black Sand and they represent the remnants of magnet sand particles welcoming the metaphor for balance and becoming solely grounded to the earth's surface. The black and tan tones plays off the sandy beaches waves washing up the sand grains leaving the placer deposits upon the shore. Featuring mesh across the uppers completing the look is a semi translucent outsole. Dropping May 27th retail will be 190 you can grab them at wayaway.com as well as in store at the Edition Boutique in Miami. Reebok has modernized the Reebok Shack Attack and it's self titled Reebok Shack Attack Modern. The first colorway to release comes in a yellow spark theme, which covers the uppers, but we do have black that runs across the toe, tongue, and laces. As for construction, they feature a durable textile upper along with the pump technology in a fusion sleeve. If you're interested on picking them up, they drop on May 19th. Ronnie Fike took to social media to share his upcoming Keth Adidas soccer collection. Now we already had a preview of the Keth Adidas A16 Plus Ultra Boost, which is expected to be limited to 500 pairs. Now we have a new model. The name isn't known. However, it does somewhat resemble the A16 Plus without the boost. But they're dressed in predominant white. We have a little bit of what appears to be pink, but it's done in leather across the heel and tongue pull tabs. Prime nets used across the upper as well as an extended collar. No release date as of yet, but expected to drop soon. There also will be apparel. For the ladies, a new Adidas NMD R1 is going to drop during June. This pair is known as White Rose. Now they feature a predominant white upper with a stretch mesh construction. Then we have Rose, which is a pastel like pink that lands on the EVA pod overlays. Along with the traditional boost, black covers the outsole. The Adidas NMD R1 White Rose will release on June 10th and retail will be 130. Belgium based footwear boutique Avenue is collaborating with Adidas Consortium for a new pack featuring two pairs of the EQT Support 9316. The two feature premium leather across the uppers which comes in your choice of either black or tan. Also featuring aniline leather, boost midsole, black outsole. They're first going to be available at Avenue on May 27th. Following select Adidas Consortium retailers will have them on June 3rd. Retail price is 200 the other day we shared with you that a new Yeezy 350 Boost V2 was dropping in December. A lot of people were pronouncing it Bluten, Grether, and another word that I don't even know. However, the actual colorway is going to be Blue Tint, Gray 3, and High Resolution Red. And here on the screen is a mock-up provided by Yeezy Mafia. Now this isn't confirmed how it's going to release, but it gives us a good idea. And as you can see, that icy light blue covers the stripe and it also intertwines within the prime knit upper, but mainly it features gray three. The SPLY 350 is done in red. Dropping December 1st, 2017, retail price will be 220. I first saw another image which had a blue, red, and gray Yeezy. And I didn't want to share it because I wasn't sure if it was authentic or not. Now seeing this mock-up, I would rather have these. The Nike Airshake Indestruct OG in white and navy was supposed to drop back in April. However, that didn't happen and we still don't know a release date but they are expected to drop in May. But what we have here is official images and it gives us a closer look. For those that don't know, this is an original colorway from 1996. They feature white leather uppers and then we have blue which outlines the Nike swoosh hinted on the heel tab and liner and then black on the outsole. 
Retail price will be 140 and like I mentioned, we don't have a set release date, but they are expected to drop in May. More details on the way. Official images also landed of the Nike Air Vapor Max Dark Team Red, and they feature Dark Team Red, Black University Red. Also the Air Unit, which my favorite is when it comes blacked out, and as you can see, it's done on this pair and black covers the outsole and Nike swoosh and the tones of red cover the fly knit upper. June 20th is the release date, retail price is 190. For me, I'll probably pass on this just because there's a lot of Vapor Maxes dropping that I would rather have over this pair. We got a few new images of the Nike KD 10 anniversary and before I thought it was white across the uppers, however it's being called faint blue so it's a very 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 light blue. Also you can see the multicolor used on the swoosh which represents teams that KD played for which includes the Texas Longhorns, Seattle Supersonics, OKC Thunder and Golden State Warriors. Now I also thought it features a translucent outsole but we still don't have an image of the outsole so I can't confirm but dropping May 26, retail will be 150. If you watched the Cavaliers take on the Celtics yesterday, you might have seen Tristan Thompson in the Nike LeBron Soldier 11 Cavs PE. So since we've only seen I think one color with the shoe, I felt like we should include this and it's not confirmed that these are going to release, but they featured Team Red across the uppers and we have yellow speckled detailing on the midsole as well as metallic silver accents. LeBron was also wearing the LeBron 14 mag, which I think is probably one of the better LeBron 14s to release. The LeBron Soldier 11 will release during June, probably before the finals happen, but we don't know if this colorway will drop. Usually when a signature shoe drops from an athlete, the previous model is done, and the Nike LeBron 14, it's been released in quite a few colorways and dropped some time back but Nike basketball is not done with the Nike LeBron 13. They're gonna drop two low editions in a premium theme during June. One features Team Red across the uppers, the other is done in anthracite. Both will feature suede and a gum outsole. No retail price, but they're gonna drop on June 1st. Uh, you know what, I think the LeBron 13 low isn't bad. I think it's a lot better than the, the mid or the high, but it's a little bit late for this. I thought they'd be dropping the LeBron 14 low soon. On to Jordan brand and we have some exciting news for those that live in the Los Angeles area. They're going to open a new Jordan flagship store located in downtown Los Angeles at 620 South Broadway. The building which dates back to the late 1920s is 19,000 square feet and features three levels. Along with the retail space, there will be training areas and a rooftop basketball court. This information was obtained from a document from the Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council's Planning and Land Use Committee. So with that being said, it'll be a while before they actually open its doors and even start construction. So we don't have a time frame when it's going to open, but either way, I'm not far from LA. I'm about six hours, so I definitely want to be at the grand opening of this. A lot of people were upset when information broke that the Off-White Air Jordan 1 collaboration would retail for $350. I myself was, I know Off-White is a high-end brand, but Jordan brand, I mean, they release high-end stuff, don't get me wrong, but for $350 for an Air Jordan 1 didn't make sense. And what does make sense is a $190 price tag, which is what the collaboration is going to retail for. Soul Heat on Feet provided this information along with the other releases in the 10X collection. So the Air Jordan 1 is going to retail for $190 while the Air Jordan 3 will for $220. The Air Jordan 3 is expected to have Nike Air branding on the heel and I'm surprised that pair doesn't have a price hike since it's a collaboration. Although $190 is higher than the $160 we're used to paying, that's a lot less than $350. $190 is very doable in my opinion. For June 2017, Jordan Brand is going to launch a new Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG Premium Essentials pack. And late last night, the Cell and University Red pair leaked. As you can see, Cell covers the uppers, midsole, tongue, pretty much everywhere. But what I notice is premium tumbled leather across the panels. Now I'm not saying this is shattered backboard quality, but it does look very, very nice. Also, the wings branding by the collar that is debossed. University Red is seen on the Nike Air branding on the tongue. And from one of the images, it actually looks like it covers the insole as well. No set release date, but they're going to drop during June. I've heard June 20th, but I haven't confirmed that. Retail price will be 160 A lot of people were talking about an Air Jordan 1 bait collaboration happening, and I highly doubt that will happen. But we have the next best thing, and honestly, I'm happy with both these color options. This is the Air Jordan 1 P51 camo pack. 
Now, nobody has leaked that these are being called P51. I actually have a product sheet that tells me that this is going to be P51. So I had no idea what P51 was, so I did a little bit of research. And what I found out is it's a P51 Mustang, and that's a fighter plane used during World War II. And it appears that some P51 fighter jets would have camouflage detailing to disguise it. Now one comes in an obvious shadow like theme, the other even comes in what appears to be a band slash bread theme, however it's dark stucco that's used across the panels so it's not a true black by any means. Also the panels and around the toe it will have camouflage detailing, now around the heel and collar will be suede. Also on the heel you'll see Air 23 with an X on it just like the Air Jordan 5 camo. Now I'm sure a lot of people will be a bit upset about this, it will not feature Nike Air branding on the tongue. But the Jumpman branding. But that doesn't matter to me. I think both are actually really, really dope. Now, what I have down is August 2017. However, I think both colorways will drop way before that. A retailer overseas showed these images. They're not available yet, but more details like always on the way. Let me know in the comment section which of the two would you rather have. Honestly, I would rather have the Shadow Pair personally. We had a handful of first looks to showcase from Jordan Brand today. And following, we have the Air Jordan 13 Altitude. So for those that don't know, this pair originally released in 2005 and it featured leather on the panels. They dropped again in 2010 and it had mesh, although people were pretty upset about it because it wasn't like the original release, they still sold very well. Now the 2017 release, it will feature leather just like the original and whoever this is already has an army of them. No release date as of yet, holiday 2017 is when they're expected to drop. Retail price will be 190 And that recaps the news. Like always, we post it first on sneakerfiles.com, and then we take it to YouTube. From the video, what I like, well, first off, I like the information that a Jordan brand flagship store is in LA, because like I said, LA is six hours away from me, so I definitely will be visiting once it opens. Now, as for pickups, I probably will grab the Air Jordan 1 P51 camo, the shadow colorway. Uh, I just think those look really dope and I'm a huge fan of the Shadow Air Jordan 1. The Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG sell in University Red. You know, if the quality is really nice on that, I would pick them up just to have someone customize them. Last but not least is the Air Jordan 13 Altitude. I missed out on both the releases so I plan on grabbing two pairs of those and beating one into the ground. But leave a comment below, let me know from this video what you liked, disliked. Thanks for watching, stay tuned to sneakerfiles.com. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe.